Hi, Julian here. Um, it's been a long time, I know that. I haven't made videos in the past couple of months. I've just been super busy. Um, doesn't matter, I'm back now. And I have an, a really exciting topic today, which is the new and highly anticipated Bader F2 Ultra Narrowband filters coming in at 3.5 and 4 nanometer band passes. <clears throat> and honestly, that is really... That is really exciting. I've been testing these filters for the past six months, and honestly, I've been I've been blown away by the performance and and the amount of detail I can get. So um, that's just a heads up for what's gonna follow. So right here, I have the let me just get that out. I have the H alpha filter, and this is a three point five nanometer filter that can shoot up to f one point nine. So that means that for all of the really fast imaging systems, ranging from um, telescopes like the, the RASA, which I use, or camera lenses going oftentimes like the one I'm using right now, that's one f4.4, um, that would be a bit too much obviously, but if you stop it down, you can use that at a very high and open aperture and still have really good results. So this is something I was really excited about when, when I heard about it, and honestly it's I felt like it was a game changer for my narrowband images because it just it just made things possible such as longer exposures that previously would have just resulted in a completely blown out image with stars the sizes of I don't know fists and it would have just been way too much so um, yeah let me show you what exactly these look like in close up. So right here, let's see if you can read this. This is the Bader H Alpha 3.5 nanometer CMOS 2 inch F2 ultra high speed filter. Uh, as you can see, the filter comes in typical Bader fashion, which means a rather small um, mount for the filter, which is very appreciated when it comes to fast F2 RASA systems, because they um, they tend to have a very small amount of back focus. So every single millimeter the, the filter has in height is bad for you. And then you just have the coatings on both sides. Um, as usual, they came in perfect condition and they've remained so ever since. I also have the other two filters right here, which are the exact same. Honestly, you can't even tell the difference um, until you look very close. So right here, you can see the, the, the turquoise fringe that's how you can tell that it's the EO3 filter. Um, but yeah, that's basically all in regards to what the filters actually look like. On the left here I have the S2 filter. You can also see the yellow-orange tint because it goes into the red spectrum. And um, yeah, that's basically it for the looks of the filters. The final question remains, what's all the fuzz about it? Why am I such so excited about this topic? And the answer basically lies in these two filters. Um, you, you can't see it that well, but really they, they look almost exactly the same. The, the, the coating looks similar and the colors are similar. It's just it's basically the same filter from what you can tell. But one of them is the new one, which is optimized for CMOS cameras and also it has a much narrower band pass. And the old one is just the old Butter f 2 high speed H alpha filter. We know these to, to be awesome filters that work well, but the this ones they just have a completely different approach and it reflects in the in the data that you captured. So for that I have a small comparison um, in terms of the the actual images and um, yeah, let's just jump into that. So anyone who has ever used a very fast imaging telescope or imaging system coupled with a CMOS camera with small pixels knows that, can, that it can be really annoying to get clean images. Why? Because every single flaw your imaging system has gets exaggerated by the fast focal ratio and by the small pixels. Now. I have a small comparison here and the gear that I used for that comparison was a RASA 11 inch, oh sorry, I wish 8 inch, um, shooting at f2 
and my QHY183M camera, which has 2.4 micron pixels, which is really small. Like the pixels are tiny and they do show up any and all errors that the, the imaging system might have. Now, let me just open that right here like this. Okay, so let me just zoom out real quick. Now, once again, um, <clears throat> this is a very fast setup and naturally the stars, even with uh, short exposures like 30 seconds or 60 seconds, there's a lot of stars in the image. If you're shooting at f8, you're not gonna even see anything close to that amount of stars. So, on the left right here, we have the old Bader F2 H-alpha filter. I think the bandpass was 7 nanometers, if I remember correctly. I haven't used it in forever because I had the new ones. And below that, you can see the new one, which is 3.5 nanometers, which, is, which means half of it. And when zooming in, you don't see a halo on the 7 nanometer one. And you don't see a halo on the 3.5 nanometer one either, which um, on the bottom one is to be expected. But for an old generation of filters that really have been on the market for a couple of years, this is impressive. And when you go to 60 seconds, there is a halo. It is a very faint halo. And honestly, with the right ticks, uh, tricks and picks inside, it's, it's gone <laughs> while processing, but it is there. But when you look at the new filter, Unless my eyes uh, deceive me, there is nothing right there. Absolutely nothing. I have I haven't seen a a halo on a star, on a star of this brightness, um, with the new filters, which is really a good thing. Like that really made me happy. But um, let's be real. When it comes to halos, um, H alpha is not the channel we look at. It's O3, and right here, I have a. I have two sets, two images um, taken with the new filter. I don't have any images with the old batter filters, the old batter O3 filters, which were 8.5 nanometers. Um, but I have the new ones, which are four nanometers. And when we look at the th 30 second one, I don't see a halo, but in the 60 second one, there is a halo. But um, to put this into, into context, this is a fairly bright star being Danab and the halo is very slight. And once again, if you know the right tricks, you can easily process, well, get rid of that halo in, in post-processing. So honestly, I am I am really impressed by the performance and I have a very sensitive setup and still it doesn't it didn't bother me. I also didn't notice any light leaks, reflections or anything of that kind. As you can see, the image is very uniform. It's very even. The only thing is on the um right corner here no right center here um but that's the m glow of my camera so that has nothing to do with the filters and that's going to be completely gone after processing so yeah overall in a field test just grayscale the images look fantastic um but obviously the the final image counts and um that's what i'm gonna get into now so to provide some context here is a more of a real live review of the performances of each individual filter. So right here, I have two single subs of um, NGC 6992, which is the Eastern Veil Nebula. And um, yeah, right off the bat, once again, the filter is produces a very clean result. There are no reflections, nothing. You can only see the amplifier glow, which is pretty significant at 240 second second subs. But um, as for the image itself, it's really clean. Once again, the equipment used for this was a Celestron Rasa 8 inch Schmidt Ackermann Astrograph. And the camera was a QHY183M. And the left one was the new Bader 3.5 nanometer H alpha filter, and the right one was the O3 4 nanometer filter. Now, when zooming in, you can you can really see the detail that this filter provides. If anyone has ever shot this this subject um, in true color, as in RGB unfiltered, you'd know that this nebula is swamped by stars. These are massive, and yet when you look at this 
image right here up close, you can see the, the, the signal is really clean and the stars are really well controlled. So um, the I think especially the O3 part of this image is absolutely mind blowing. The amount of detail um, you have in the in these filaments is just fantastic, and um, yeah, the same goes for H alpha except that it's a bit noisier. But um, yeah, so those were individual four minute subs, and now here are the stacked images. They haven't really been processed. This is just an auto stretch. The only thing I did was some minor um, gradient reduction because I did shoot from modest light pollution and there's always light pollution there. But um, yeah, this is when you really see the amount of detail that these filters caught, um, especially this part, I love that. And uh, yeah, it's just the, the result is so clean and this is just, I believe it's four to five hours per filter, roughly. And um, yeah, there is not much noise left, honestly. And um, yeah, I'm just, I was just um, impressed from the beginning to the end. And as for the final results, you probably know that already if you've followed me on social media, but um, it was this image. And especially this, this upper portion here in, in hydrogen alpha isn't often shown. And honestly, I think I wouldn't have gotten that without these filters because if, if the stars hadn't been blocked so much by the narrow band pass, I wouldn't have been able to stretch this image that far. And once again, this wasn't a deep integration. That was just four to five hours per filter. I think it was a total of 8.5 hours on this image, um, which really isn't a lot. So um, from my standpoint, where I want to get awesome images, but don't want to invest and <laughs> 100 hours into an image anymore, um, these filters really were game changers for me. And um, yeah, I'll show you a couple of other images that I took with the filters. And um, you can always, if you want to see raw files or anything, really any questions about the filters, just let me know. I'll be happy to provide them to you. CMOS cameras really took up the market and um, they just came out with incredibly high performance sensors that have basically no noise, very small pixels allowing for very high resolutions and of course the massively improved quantum efficiency. So what does that mean? It means that with new cameras, with new technology, the other technology also has to adapt, right? And that was the same case for the filters. Um, and when you look at the old Bader high-speed filters, they were great at what they were meant to be good for, which were using CCD cameras at fast setup, with fast setups. But now that CMOS cameras have completely taken over, it's, it, it really was time for a new generation of filters. And that's exactly what Bader did. And honestly, these filters have improved in every category imaginable. You have, you have got more contrast, you have got narrow band passes allowing for more details as well. And the most important part, because like I said previously, anyone who's ever imaged at F2 knows halos are so annoying. And with these new filters, they're basically not an issue anymore. I really... Of course, you can always take the brightest star in the sky and you get uh, halos with even the best filters on this on the market, but um, for most subjects, I've I haven't even thought about halos because they're just not there anymore. And yes, there are filters that cost more and they do perform better. Like when you look at chroma filters, for example, yes, they would outperform them. But when you compare the cost, you pay a fraction of the price for an extremely well performing filter. So for someone like me who already spends way too much money on this hobby, it's really a no-brainer. You take the one that's, that's economical. And um, yeah, all in all these filters have, have changed imaging for me completely. Because if you look at my feed, you know that I'm usually an RGB guy. I, I, I love broadband imaging. 
dusty, faint stuff in, in, in RGB, that's what I live for. And narrowband really wasn't a thing for me because I just didn't... I don't know, it just wasn't that great. But when I started using these filters, that completely my, my view completely changed. Because now you can have this incredibly high contrast image with, with tiny stars that you usually only see from refractor images because that's when the stars are well controlled, but like I said, this, is, this has been a game changer for me. So if you have a very fast setup and are considering to do some, um, some SHO or bicolor or whatever narrowband work, I would highly suggest you consider these filters. And of course, last but not least, I would like to thank Bader for sending me these filters to test them out. It's been, it's been a truly fun experience. And I feel like this has definitely stepped up my imaging game, and I'm so much looking forward to creating more images with these filters. It's really been a blast. And um, on a personal matter, I know that I haven't been able to post any content lately. Life has just been extremely busy for me, but things change again, and I am looking forward to a couple of more projects I have planned. I'm also looking to start posting more videos again. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for the future, I have a lot of stuff coming up, and as always, clear skies!